Hello students, this is your English lesson. Today we are going to read unit number 8, B. Wordsworth from Oxford Modern English, book 8. So we start our lesson. This is page number 107 from your book. Words to know. What you want? What do you want? The boy speaks in the style of the residents of Port of Spain, Trinidad. B. Wordsworth. Bill is the short form of William. The other famous poet was William Wordsworth. Botanical. To do with plants. Botany. The science of plants. Calypsonians. Calypsonians. Caribbean musicians who sing Calypso. A West Indian song. Conogates, a type of millipede. Distill to extract the essence of something. George, a neighbor of Megill Street. Grow, grow, a species of palm found in the in the West Indies, West Indies and South America. Howl his tail away to go away. Liners, ocean, vessels, ships. Negotiate, arrange matters such as price, etc. Patronize, support, act as patron towards. Patron, regular customer, one who supports. Now come to the reading. Three beggars called punctually every day at the hospitable houses in Magal Street. At about 10, a man came in his dhoti and white jacket and we poured a tin of rice into the sack he carried on his back. At 12, an old woman smoking a clay pipe came and she got a scent. At 2, a blind man led by a boy called for his penny. Sometimes we had Rog, Rog, a dishonest man. One day a man called and said he was hungry. We gave him a meal. He asked for a cigarette and wouldn't go until we had lit it for him. That man never came again. The strangest caller came one afternoon at about four o'clock. I had come back from school and was in my home clothes. The man said to me, Sone, may I come inside your yard? He was a small man and he was tidily dressed. He wore a hat, a white shirt and black trousers. I asked, what you want? He said, I want to watch your bees. We had four small grew grew palm trees and they were full of uninvited bees. My mother came out, looked at the man and asked in an unfriendly way, what you want? The man said, I want to watch your bees. His English was so good, it didn't sound natural, and I could see my mother was worried. She said to me, stay here and watch him while he watches the bees. The man said, thank you, madam. You have done a good deed today. He spoke very slowly and very correctly, as though every word was costing his money. We watched the bees, this man and I, for about an hour. Squatting near the palm trees, squatting, sit with one's knees bent and one heels close to. The man said, I like watching bees. Sone, do you like watching bees? I said, I aren't have the time. He shook his head sadly. He said, that's what I do. I just watch ants for days. Have you ever watched ants and scorpions and... And centipedes, centipedes are poisonous bugs with many tiny legs. And conogies, conogies, long scaleless eels found in the warm waters of West Indies. Have you watched those? I shook my head. I said, what you does do, mister? He got up and said, I am a poet. I said, a good poet. He said, the greatest in the world. What's your name, mister? B. Wordsworth. B for Bill. Black? Black Wordsworth? 
White Wordsworth was my brother. We share one heart. I can watch small flower like the morning glory and cry. I said, Why you does cry? Why, why, why? You will know when you grow up. You are a poet too, you know. And when you are a poet, you can cry for everything. I couldn't laugh. He said, You like your mother? When she not beating me, he pulled out a printed sheet from his hip pocket and said, On this paper is the greatest poem about mothers and I am going to sell it to you at a bargain price for four cents. I went inside and I said, Ma, you want to buy a poetry uh, for four cents? My mother said, Tell that blasted man to howl his tail away from my yard. You hear? I said, To be worth what my mother says, she ain't have four cents. Be worth what said. It is the poet's tragedy. And he put the paper back in his pocket. He didn't seem to mind. I said, is a funny way to go around selling poetry like that? Only Calypsonians do that sort of thing. A lot of people does buy. Calypsonian, Caribbean musicians who sing West Indian song. He said, no one has yet bought a single copy. But why you does keep on going round then? He said, in this way I watch many things and I always hope to meet poets. I said, you really think I is a poet? You are as good as me, he said. And when B. Wordsworth left, I prayed I would see him again. About a week later, coming back from school one afternoon, I met him at the corner of Mayhill Street. He said, I have been waiting for you for a long time. I said, you sell any poetry yet? He shook his head. He said, in my yard, I have the best mango tree in Port of Spain. And how the mangoes are ripe and red and very sweet and juicy and very sweet and juicy. I have waited here for you to tell you this and to invite you to come and eat some of my mangoes. He lived in Alberto Street in a one roomed but in one roomed hut placed right in the center of the lot. The yard seemed all green. There were there was the big mango tree, there was a coconut tree and there was a plum tree the place looked wild as though it wasn't in the city at all you couldn't see all the big concrete houses in the street he was right the mangoes were sweet and juicy i ate about six and the yellow mango juice ran down my arms to my elbows and down my mouth to my chin and my shirt was stained my mother said when i got home where you was you think you is a man now and could go all over the place, go cut a whip for me. She beat me rather badly and uh, I ran out of the house swearing that I would never come back. I went to B. Wordsworth's house. I was so angry my nose was bleeding. B. Wordsworth said, stop crying and we will go for a walk. I stopped crying but I was breathing short. We went for a walk. We walked down to Street Clear Avenue to the Swana and we walked to the race course. Beavers was said, Now let us lie on the grass and look up at the sky, and I want you to think how far those stars are from us. I did. As he told me, and I saw what he meant, I felt like nothing, and at the same time, I had never felt so big and great in all my life. I forgot all my anger and all my tears and all the blows. When I said I was better, he began telling me the names of the stars, and I particularly remembered the constellation of Orion the Hunter, though I don't really know why. I can spot Orion even today, but I have forgotten the rest. Then a light was flashed into our faces and we saw a policeman. We got up from the grass. The policeman said, what are you doing here? Beavers was said, I have been asking myself the same question for 40 years. We became friends, Beavers Worth and I. He told me, you must never tell anybody about me and about the mango tree and the coconut tree and the plum tree. You must keep that a secret. If you tell anybody, I will know because I am a tree. I am a poet because I am a poet. 
I gave him my word. I gave him my word and I kept it. I liked his little room. It had no more furniture than George's front room, but it looked cleaner and healthier, but it also looked lonely. One day I asked him, Mr. Wordsworth, why you does keep all this bush in your yard and it does make the place damp? He said, listen, and I will tell you a story. Once upon a time, a boy and girl met each other and they fell in love. They loved each other so much. They got married. They were both poets. He loved words. She loved grass and flowers and trees. They lived happily in a single room. And then one day, the girl poet said to the boy poet, we are going to have another poet in the family. But this poet was never born because the girl died and the young poet died with her, inside her. And the girl's husband was very sad and he said he would never touch a thing in the girl's garden. And so the garden remained and grew high and wild. I looked at B. Wordsworth and as he told me this lovely story, he seemed to grow older. I understood his story. We went for long walks together. We went to the botan botanical gardens and the rogue gardens. We climbed Chancellor Hill in the late afternoon and watched the darkness fall on Port of Spain and watched the lights go on in the city and on the ships in the harbor. He did everything as though he were doing it for the first time in his life. He would say to me, now how about having some ice cream? And when I said yes, he would grow very serious and say, now which cafe shall we patronize? As though it were a very important thing, he would think for some time about it and finally say, I think I will go and negotiate the purchase with the, that shop. The world became a most exciting place. One day when I was in his yard, he said to me, I have a great secret which I am now going to tell you. I said, it really secret at the moment. Yes. I looked at him and he looked at me. He said, this is just between you and me. Remember, I am writing a poem. Oh, I, I was disappointed. He said, but this is a different sort of poem. This is the greatest poem in the world. I whistled. He said, I have been working on it for more than five years now. I will finish it in about 22 years from now. That is, if I keep on writing at the present rate. You does write a lot then? He said, not anymore. I just write one line a month, but I make sure it is good line. I asked, what was last month's good line? He looked up at the sky and said, the past is deep. I said, it is a beautiful line. Be words what said, I hope to distill the experiences of a whole month into that single line of poetry. So in 22 years, I shall have written a poem that will sing to all humanity. I was filled with wonder. Our walks continued. We walked along the sea wall at dock site one day and I said, Mr. Wordsworth, if I drop this pin in the water, you think it will float? He said, this is a strange world. Drop your pin and let us see what will happen. The pin sank. I said, how is the poem this month? But he never told me any other line. He merely said, oh, it comes, you know, it comes. Or we would sit on the sea wall and why the liners come into the harbor. But of the greatest poem in the world, I heard no more. I felt he was growing older. How you does live? Mr. Wordsworth, I asked him one day. He said, you mean how I get money? When I noted, he laughed in a crooked way. He said, I single collapses in the calypso season. And that lasts you the rest of the year. It is enough. But you will be the richest man in the world when you write the greatest poem. He didn't reply. One day when I went to see him in his little house, I found him lying on his little bed. He looked so old and so weak that I found myself wanting to cry. He said, the poem is not going well. He wasn't looking at me. He was looking through the window at the coconut tree and he was speaking as though I wasn't there. He said, when I was 20, I felt the power within myself. Then almost in front of my eyes, I could see his face growing older and more tired. He said, but that, that was a long time ago. And then I felt it so keenly. It was as though I had been slapped by my mother. I could see it clearly on his face. 
it was there for everyone to see death on the shrinking face he looked at me and saw my tears and sat up he said come i went and sat on his knees he looked into my eyes and he said oh you can see it too i always knew you had the poet's eye he didn't even look sad and that made me burst out crying loudly he pulled me to his thin chest and said do you want me to tell you a funny story and he smiled encouragingly at me but i couldn't reply he said when i have finished this story i want i want you to promise that you will go away and never come back to see me do you promise i nodded he said good well listen that story i told you about the boy poet and the girl poet do you remember that that wasn't true it was something i just made up all this talk about poetry and the greatest poem in the world that wasn't true either isn't that the funniest thing you have heard but his voice broke i left the house and ran home crying like a poet for everything i saw i walked along alberto street a year later but i could find no sign of the poet's house it hadn't vanished just like that it had been pulled down and a big two storied building had taken its place the mango tree and the plum tree and the coconut tree had all been cut down and there was brick and concrete everywhere it was just as though b wordsworth had never existed now come to the exercises a comprehension one answer the following questions a what kind of person is considered a rog by the narrator answer the narrator describes a man who only came once and behaved somewhat strangely as an example of a rog b why does the narrator say his english was so good it didn't sound natural answer the narrator says his english was so good it didn't sound natural because the poet speaks standard english the narrator and the people around, around him including his mother do not speak in standard english see according to b wordsworth what could a poet do quite easily answer is according to b the b wordsworth the poet could cry easily D do you think the narrator's mother liked poetry give reasons for your answer answer she does not have the time or opportunity to enjoy poetry she does not want to buy a poem from the poet so she does not like poetry e what did b was what give as a reason for traveling about answer b was what's reason for traveling traveling about is that he gets to watch many things f why is b was what's answer to the policeman's question funny answer b was what's answer is funny because he responds to the policeman's question about what they are doing in that particular place at that particular particular time as if the policeman is asking what his purpose is on earth g how did the world become an exciting place for the narrator answer the world became an exciting place for the narrator because the poet took him to see lots of places and did everything as though he were doing it for the first time in his life h when the narrator saw wordsworth looking so ill how was he affected answer when the narrator saw wordsworth looking so ill he felt himself wanting to cry this question is more difficult discuss it first I my mother said tell that blasted man to howl his tail away from my yard you hear i said to be words worth my mother say she ain't have four cents what does this exchange tell us about the mother and the boy answer 
This exchange tells us that the mother has no interest in the poet and wants him to leave. She probably views him as just another caller or rogue. It tells us that the boy does not wish to offend the man and that he is interested in him. 2. You will have noticed that many of the sentences spoken by the narrator when he is using direct speech, his mother and the policeman are grammatically wrong. Below there are 12 sentences, all of which are incorrect. Correct them and rewrite them in your book. Can you explain what is wrong with each other? A. What you want. Correct sentence is What do you want? Here, auxiliary do is missing. B. Stay here and watch him while he watch the bees. Stay here and watch him while he watch the bees. Subject verb agreement is missing here. C. I ain't have the time. Correct sentence is, I don't have the time. So, here, don't. We use don't with I. That is missing. D. What you does do, mister? Correct sentence is, what do you do, mister? Here, placement of auxiliary and subject verb Agreement is missing. E. Why you does cry? Correct sentence is Why do you do cry? Again, subject verb agreement is incorrect. F. When she not beating me? Correct sentence is When she is not beating me? Again, missing of auxiliary. G. Ma, you want to buy a poetry for four cents? Here, Ma, do you want to buy a poem for four cents? Here, determiner noun agreement is missing. H, my mother say she ain't have four cents. Correct sentence is my mother says she does not or doesn't have four cents. Again, subject verb agreement is missing here. I, you really think I is a poet. Correct sentence is, you really think I am a poet. Again, we use am with I. J, you does write a lot then? Correct sentence is, do you write a lot then? Question format and agreement is incorrect. K, you sell any poetry yet? Correct is, have you sold any poetry yet? Here, question format and tense is wrong. L, where you was? Correct sentence is, where were you? B, working with words, the following words from the story have two or more meanings. Write them the meaning. Consult a dictionary if you need help. Watch. Wakefulness at night, alert state, man or body of men for patrolling the streets night. A small time piece, worn on the wrist or be vigilant. Round, circular, involving circular motion, entire circular object, allowance of something distributed palm the part of the inner surface of the hand that extends from the wrist to the basis of the fingers and unbranched unbranched evergreen tree of tropical and warm regions with a crown of very long feathered or fan shaped leaves stars a fixed luminous point in the night sky which is a large, remote, incandescent like stars. Of a film, play or other show, have someone as principal performer. Lie. Be, remain or be kept in a specified state. 
of a person or animal be in or assume a horizontal or resting position on a sporting surface right morally good justified or acceptable true or correct as a fact blows of wind move creating an air current and an act of blowing an instrument chest the front surface of a person's or animal's body between the neck and the stomach a large strong box typically made of wood and used for storage or transport be working with words two for each of the following pictures think of the correct word and a homophone a shake s h e i k h shake s h a k e shake b sell c e w l l sell s e w l l sell c mail m a i l mail m a l e mail d sun s u n sun s o n sun e sweet s w w e t sweet s u i t e sweet root r o o t root r o u t e root Three. There are hundreds of other homophones and homonyms in English. Can you think of any? Make a list. Students, first of all, let me clear about homonyms. Homonyms are words which have the same spelling but not the same meaning. Words which sound the same but have different spellings are called homophones. List of Homonyms is lead, back, rest, saw, fold, sphere, head, ear, late, last, organ, pat, sound, found, sped, etc. And examples of homophones are dear, d e a r, d double e r, dear, flower, f l o w e r, flower, f l o u r. P L A N plane P L A N E die D I E die D Y E die right W R I T E and R I G H to right soul S O L E S O U L soul heel H E A L and H double E L heel tight T I D E T I E D etc. Three fill in the blanks with I E or E I. A perceive P E R C E I V E perceive B R E C E I P T received C H E I G H T height D S H E I K H sheikh E F I E L D field F R E C E I V E receive G D E C E I T deceit H A C H I E V E achieve I, C E I L I N G ceiling. J C O N C E I V E conceive. K D E C E I V E deceive. L C H I E F chief. M G R I E F grief. And B E L I E V E believe. O S I E V E sieve. P R E L I V E relieve. Q R E L I E F relief R S H R I E K shriek S Y I E L D yield T T H I E F thief. Learning about language. Complete the following by using suitable adverbial clauses of time. A the beggar sat on the door step while the door is closed. B She asked me to visit her whenever I want. C. The fielders paced up and down as soon as they accepted that challenge. D. A great cheer went up from the pavilion when the batsman scored six. E. The lights went off as soon as we entered the house. F. We never go out of the house until parents stay. Uh, take us along with them. G. The mother burst into tears after her father's death.
H. I have not seen Saima since Friday. I. There was silence in the classroom as soon as teacher entered the classroom. J. Man will live on earth as long as it is heaven. To identify the adverbial clause of time in the following. A. Irfan went straight to the cinema after his friends had left. Here went is adverbial clause. B. I promise to come and say goodnight to you as soon as you have got into bed. Promise is adverbial clause. See, while the clock ticked, the girl's parents sat waiting and watching. Sat is adverbial clause. D. We visit them whenever they come to stay in the city. Here, visit is adverbial clause. E. Before the day broke, they had woken and bathed. Had woken is adverbial clause here. Thanks for listening. For new videos, don't forget to subscribe my channel. And if you like my videos, please share and like.